Merhabalar herkese. Hepiniz IFD Talks webinarlarına hoş geldiniz. Bugün Royal College of Art'e giriş için sıra dışı bir portfolyo programı Stephanie ve Joseph'ten dinliyor olacağız. Lütfen sorularınızı soru cevap bölümünden yönlendirmeyi unutmayın. Yes, Stephanie, the stage is yours now. Thank you very much, Zeynep. And hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Stephanie Lemuako. I'm head of student recruitment and marketing at the Royal College of Art. And um, joined with my colleague, Joe. Jo yep. Uh, and uh, who's a senior tutor uh, and uh, an admissions tutor at the School of Communication here at the Royal College of Art. So um, I'll hand over to Joe, but um, just want to say thank you, everyone, for making it this afternoon. We're very excited to be here today, um, not only to welcome um, Turkish students, um, the organizers of this event is a, a, a friend uh, and a, a partner of IEFT, uh, but we've opened up this event to everyone as well. All international students are welcome to this webinar. And we hope that this would help you in your journey coming to the RCA and just preparing your portfolio um, towards an application and towards a successful future. Um, and I'm going to hand you over to Joe now. Thanks, Joe. I'll be in the background for any questions and we'll support Joe later on in the Q&A. Thanks all. Thanks. Thanks, Steph. And hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, so as Steph said, my name is Joe, Joe Pokajoy. I'm a senior tutor on the MA Visual Communication Program at the RCA. But I'm also admissions tutor for the School of Communication. So that means I look over, I meet lots of potential students around the world. Um, I also am one of the people that, re re that reviews your portfolios and looks through your work that you've submitted. So I'll, today, I'll give you a quick introduction to the RCA as a place, but then spend most of the time talking through um, some tips and some thoughts that you might want to consider when you are um, putting an application together for postgraduate study, probably anywhere, um, but particularly um, uh, if, if you are choosing to put a portfolio together for, for an application at the RCA. Um, so the RCA in London, um, we've been um, working as an art school for a very long time. Um, during the life of the um, RCA, our alumni have become recognized as leaders uh, in their disciplines, making national, international um, waves wherever they work, it really influencing the cultural and, and artistic life of, of particularly London, but also worldwide. Um, whether you have a back creative background or a career changer, um, we really welcome students from all different uh, stages of their career. So you might be coming straight from an undergraduate course, um, studying a BA in a relevant subject, uh, but equally you might have been working um, for a significant period of time in a studio or in an ind industry and looking to get connect back into education in some way. And we really welcome both of those different routes into the, to the RCA as an institution. Um, also, we are increasingly interdisciplinary. Uh, so... This is reflective of the world around us. We can no longer sort of afford to sit in the silos of our particular disciplines or subjects. So working with others, whether that's working in interdisciplinary projects with students from other fields within the RCA, or working alongside partners in other industries, whether it's in engineering, mathematics, architecture, um, in sort of policy making or other fields that we're increasingly working alongside um, with, with using our creative tools um, to uh, address particular questions, particular issues that are increasingly important to the world around us. Um, so the RCA is made primarily of four core schools. Uh, so we have the School of Architecture, the School of Arts and Humanities, the School of Design, and the School of Communication, where I am based most of the time. So I'm going to come at this presentation very much um, from the School of Communication and our position and what we look for in our students and, and ways that we would hope that you might think about putting a portfolio together. Lots of these lessons will apply to, and lots of these thoughts will hopefully apply to other schools as well. But I think if you if you are interested in the other schools, definitely look at the um, other information for those particular schools that are available online. So the RCA, we are um, across three campuses, um, but also you will be, if you choose to study with us, um, at the heart of one of the most creative and cultural uh, cities in the world. Um, and many of our students not only sort of spend time on the campus or in the studios working together, but we're equally reaching out to cultural institutions, museums, galleries, organizations that really make the up the fabric of, of the RCA. And part of your experience of studying with us is to immerse yourself in the subject, immer immerse yourself in the learning around your discipline, but also immerse yourself in the in the culture and the the networks and the and the interesting kind of activities of the cultural life of, of London itself as well, whilst you're a student with us. 
Um, so yeah, as I said, we're based across three campuses at RCA. So um, depending on which program you apply for, you might be at our uh, Kensington campus, which is our home um, hub campus. Uh, you might be at our Battersea campus, where there's lots more uh, sort of fine art printmaking and other technical facilities. Or if you're joining us in the School of Communication, you'll be at our White City campus, which is just north of uh, of, of Kensington. Um, it's just a few images of, of this is our Kensington campus here. So yeah, RCA White City is the is the hub and the home of the School of Communication. Uh, so there we have difficult and different uh, technical facilities that you might want to access. But equally, we see very much all students moving across all three campuses. Uh, so one of the again one of the huge benefits of being part of the RCA is the incredible technical facilities that you have access to, run by incredible technicians um, who are all practitioners themselves. So if you join us in uh, in in White City. You'll spend a lot of time down in Kensington uh, working with those facilities uh, down there, immersive environment technologies, um, other forms of new emerging AI technologies, all based in, in uh, Kensington and Battersea. Or you might spend time in printmaking, you might spend time um, down in the, the film studios down in Battersea. So all of these facilities are available to you uh, at, at, during your, your studies with us. Um, I'll focus now a bit about the School of Communication, then I'll move on to some uh, advice around your portfolios. Uh, so in the School of Communication, we interrogate the fundamental ways in which communication sh shapes our lives and use this knowledge to develop new ways of experiencing, interacting um, and communicating with the world. We make space for conversation, intercultural exchange, new ideas and diverse voices. We conceptualize craft and our storytellers with animation, data visualization, game design, graphic design, illustration, photography, and moving image, and through engaging with installations, XR experiences, site-specific work, immersive world building and soundscapes, et cetera, et cetera, and more. Um, as communication practitioners, um, we are an important part of the ecosystem that contributes to addressing pervasive inequalities, the environmental crisis, and systemic injustices that we face today. So during your time at RCA, what we hope you will get from it is both a deepening of your practice, so a deepening of the skills, the knowledge that you hold around your particular chosen program of study, but equally using that knowledge to address different questions that are emerging um, that are around both locally within the city of London, within the UK, but also globally as well as part of these the, the role that we can play in the world. Um, so the School of Communication, we're made up of uh, four uh, MA programmes, so MA in Animation, Digital Direction, Information Experience Design, Visual Communication, and a new MFA in Communication um, that you that was that it launched this, this year. Um, if you are interested in more specific details about each of the individual programmes across the RCA, uh, but particularly in the School of Communication, we have online recordings of all of our online open days that have, um, that each program has run. So you could have about an hour each of these presentations. So if you're interested in delving more into visual communication or animation, you can see the heads of program or the senior tutors talk through the curriculum, talk through the experience of being a student, uh, talk about the values of each of the programs. So this would give you a real insight into the into the what it means to be a student in one of these particular programs. So I really recommend checking these out online um, if you are interested in putting in an application. Equally for all of the programs across the whole of the RCA and the different schools as well. Once you've chosen your program, um, you, we encourage you then to visit our main uh, application website. So this application sort of hub will talk you through all the key information that you need in terms of uh, creating an account uh, and the site and the then the whole sort of process in terms of putting an application together and also key dates and deadlines that you might need to meet if you're looking through to put an application uh, together. Then you're asked to prepare and submit your portfolio. Uh, so I'll talk through a little, a few things that that we've noticed in the school, um, and a few things that I've noticed when review, reviewing portfolios. So first off, there is official advice. So when you choose the particular program, um, make sure that you um, know the specific program you're applying to and understand why you're applying to it. So each program has a very different set of values and has a very set, set different set of uh, criteria that they're looking for in their students. Um, and again, this is general good advice for any application that you put to um, a, 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 any sort of academic program is that you're not applying to the institution alone, you're applying to a particular program of study. And I think this is really important to us at RCA, that each of the programs of study has a really specific and a really um, 
carefully cultivated community of people working together around shared ideas, shared questions, shared research. So what we want you to do when you're putting your portfolio together is speak directly to that. So obviously, we'd love you to join us at the RCA, but we want to know why particularly you're applying to a specific program of study. So definitely look at the um, program information um, in the application portal or on, on our website. So every program spends a lot of time writing their um, program descriptions and the different ways that we explain what we do. Um, but equally, you might want to check out other sources of information. So looking at our graduates' work, looking at other um, sort of published work that comes from our tutors or some of the, yeah, the academic activities that are coming out of the, the, the programs in the school. Um, but when you are putting your, your um, application together, as I said, listen carefully to what the program is asking you to submit, but also avoid submitting a general portfolio that you already have. So we're not asking you to make a whole new body of work when you apply. Um, absolutely use the existing material, the existing uh, projects or the existing work that you've done. Um, but equally, select carefully the projects which you feel demonstrate that connection that you feel you have or would like to develop with a particular program of study. Um, so don't submit your general portfolio website, for example, choose key projects which tell us something about what it is that you hope that relationship might be with this particular course. As I said, look, look carefully at the project, um, the program descriptions. So these are the four MA programs that we have. There are lots of crossovers. There are lots of similar kind of questions and ways of working that you'll notice across the whole of the RCA, particularly within the School of Communication. However, there are key differences as well. So look carefully at the language that we use to describe the types of activity or the types of roles or the types of research that we do. So for example, animation has a focus on artistic director-led creative practice, um, uh, increasingly looking at other new forms of technology, virtua virtual reality, augmented reality, or new media, uh, but equally really thinking critically about the role of an animator in the world. Information experience design is very much looking at generating experiences of complexity, addressing non-human and more than human perspectives. Uh, visual communication, we're very focused on conversational practice and forms of dialogue and exchange, how you create these reciprocal relationships with audiences, using the tools of graphic design, illustration, and experimental communication to create common ground between people to address particular questions or ways of working. So, we don't want, need you to echo these words back at us, but definitely think about these the language that we use and how some of these uh, this terminology or some of this this way of talking about work might connect to your own practice in in different ways. One, it will hopefully help you make um, make it easier for you to choose a particular program, but also to see what that relationship already might be between what we're doing uh, um, in the program and what it is that you might be hoping to do through your work. So. We get a lot of applications. I'm sure you won't be surprised to hear across the whole of the RCA. It's very competitive. Um, we get exceptional uh, applications coming from all parts of the world, both within the UK and, and many countries around the world as well. Um, so bear your reader in mind. Um, so when you're thinking about put, sort of des designing or putting your portfolio together, we, we ask you to put it together in um, PDF form. Uh, so you're creating this narrative structure which holds different projects. Each school and each program will ask slightly different things of what you're uploading. So for visual communication, for example, we ask you to submit two core projects. So by core projects, we mean projects which have gone through the whole stage of research, development, evolution and thinking, and then the creation of some form of output or outcome that you're able to evaluate. And then we also ask you to, to submit up to three supporting smaller projects, which might be more experimental, uh, might be works in progress, so work that's on underway or yet, as yet unfinished. Um, so these sort of smaller projects, which maybe are testing new ground or asking a different set of questions, or maybe hoping to move your work in a slightly different direction. These works in progress or these smaller projects we find are often much more indicative of um, work that you might do next rather than the work that you've already done. Equally, if you're applying to animation, they have a very different set of things that they would like you to address through the work you submit. They'd like you to include a showreel of work, for example, that demonstrates moving image and your ability to work with moving image and sound and narrative. So really look at the, what it is that the heads of program are asking you to submit in, in terms of your individual um, yeah, applications. At this point, I also just mentioned that you are welcome to apply to two 
programs of study in any one um, academic cycle. So for any, in a, over any one year period, you're able to apply for two programs. We used to have it that you could apply to many programs, but we actually we find that that's not particularly helpful for you guys in terms of making a decision. It also makes it very difficult for us to sort of really evaluate why it is that you're applying to a specific program. My advice as, a, as, as somebody that's worked sort of looking through portfolios a lot is try to choose the one application, the one particular program of study that you feel speaks to you the best or the most clearly. Um, the reason I say that is it becomes much more complicated when you're sort of tailoring two different portfolios of work, but also it really helps, I think, if you then were to get an offer um, in, in terms of making the right decision. So I would spend the time before putting the, the portfolio together in really thinking about which program of study that you want to that you want to study uh, to apply to. Um, as I said, include finished projects, but also include works in progress. Um, this, again, is particularly if you might be on your uh, final year of your undergraduate program, your BA course. Um, maybe you're working on your final sort of major project or your final piece of work for your for your undergraduate course. Um, this work might not yet be finished. We're asking you to submit this work very, fairly soon. So this work might either have just started or it might be underway or midway through. We would love you to include that work, um, even if you're not completely sure about where it's heading. So find a way of explaining or articulating to us what the hopes of that project is and any initial work that you've done in, in realizing that project. These, these, these works, as I said, these works in progress or these early projects are often um, really helpful in, in us seeing where you're heading um, in terms of your work and your research and your practice. Equally, um, yeah, we as part of the submission, when you are including any 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 of your projects, we don't want to just see the outcome. We don't want to just see the things that you've made as a result of the projects. We really want to see the research and the process behind the work. So we're interested in the development of your work, the influences behind it, and the decisions that you make as a creative person in terms of in realizing these projects. So this might for you be sketchbooks or notebooks that you've used to record and document your research journey. So you might want to scan these in or photograph some pages from your sketchbooks or your notebooks or your, if you use um, sort of process books in different ways. However, you're naturally working in, in, in different ways. We'd love to see the thinking and the process behind your work. Yeah, it could it also include other forms of, you know, maybe you keep all of your work um, on a Google Drive and it's just folders of lots of images and lots of different kind of insights that you gather on your desktop, on your computer. It might be that you keep everything on a desk in your studio, in, in, your, uh, in your house or your bedroom. So just maybe take an image of the way that you'll work. What does that working process look like um, for you and what does that feel like? It gives us a real kind of interesting insight into your creative, into your creative process. Um, equally, I'm talking here a lot about self-directed or self-motivated work. If you have worked in industry for a significant period of time, it's really normal and really natural that you lose sometimes lose touch with those much um, more personal, closer projects that you that you sort of do in your own time or you do through self-initiated sort of ideas and thoughts. Um, so don't worry if you don't have that. Um, so it's quite common for many of our applications to include work from a long time ago. So maybe you've worked in a, in a studio or you've worked in industry for a few years, but there's a project you did two or three years ago that you thought was really exciting that you wanted to return to and give more attention to. So you're welcome to include that work as, as well if it gives us a sense of what it is you hope to address through, through your time studying with us. If you were to join us um, and spend uh, 12 months with us studying on the M MA or MFA programs, you'll hear um, this word critical position quite a lot, particularly in the School of Communication. Um, so we don't need this to be resolved in your application, but we'd love to hear a little bit about what your thoughts might be as you come and join us. So by critical position, we mean what are the key theories, ideas, thoughts, philosophies, politics, values, which really underpin your work in different ways. So maybe you're really passionate about a particular political issue at the moment. Um, maybe you're really interested in, in a question that's coming from your own community or your, where your, your home country. Um, maybe there's a particular theory or philosophy that is really kind of starting to challenge you to think differently about your work in, in, in different ways. Again, part of studying an MA is to figure this stuff out. And many of our students, as soon as they arrive, start really delving deep 
uh, into these questions. So we don't need this to be completely finished, but we'd love to hear what your th initial thoughts might be. So it might be that there's a text that you've read recently or a writer or a philosopher that's really kind of challenged you. Just mention that in your, in your application somewhere. Or maybe it's another practitioner, another artist, another designer um, that's really inspired or challenged you in different ways. And just talk about that connection that you have. So yeah, so we're not only interested in the outcomes you have made, but we're interested in your practice more broadly. By practice, um, we mean the things that hold the projects. We're all more than a series of projects. Um, we do projects, we do work, um, we work in different environments, we work in different ways, but the practice for us is the thing that holds all of these different elements together. So the tools that you use, the skills that you have or you hope to acquire, uh, the way the values the philosophies behind your work the hopes and aspirations for your work in the future all of these things we would frame and hold as a practice um, and what we hope to offer you uh, during 12 months of study on the MA is the space to really think deeply and develop that practice in different ways but for the application give us a sense of what that shape of practice might be right now or what it might be uh, you hope after 12 months of, of study as you head into the future, even if it changes completely once you arrive, give us a sense of what that starting point might be. Um, skills are obviously important. You, uh, the RCA is postgraduate only college, so we are only working from postgraduate level right up to um, uh, sort of PhD and, and postgraduate research level. So we'd expect there already to be a very well established skill set that you possess in whatever field and discipline that you're coming to us from. Um, equally, you'll be learning new skills, you'll be learning new things when you arrive. Um, but we really sort of focus much more on uh, the critical thinking, the research, the conceptual development of your practice and work, and then you learn new skills alongside that. So skills are important, but when we're looking through your portfolio, we're also really focused on your voice, your values, and what it is you hope to learn if you were to join us. Community is a word that you, we uh, talk about a lot. Um, you, are a joy, you would be joining a community of practitioners from all different parts of the world, all at different levels and stages of their career, all with different life experiences, histories, interests and values, all coming together to work together for 12 months to really inspire one another, to collaborate with one another, uh, to, to change and transform our work in new and unexpected ways. So again, give us a sense of what it is that you would love to bring with you uh, when you join us. What stories, what histories, what knowledge, what experiences, that, what do you want to kind of share with us as part of joining this particular community of study? Um, so yeah, so as I said, many of you, and we really, really encourage people that are either mid-career or sort of certainly have had significant career experience or also to apply uh, to us. So it might be that your portfolio is much more commercially focused. So for example, if you're working in graphic design and applying to visual communication, you might have worked sort of in much more commercial contexts or in advertising or in marketing uh, or these much more applied situations. Uh, so your work might not have quite that texture of self-direction and research and experimentation that often uh, we see in, in undergraduate students coming straight from college. So absolutely do include those commercial projects when if that's sort of the bulk of your work but talk reflectively to us about what it is that that work and how that work relates to the things that you'd like to do next with your um research or with your practice as you move forward uh, so that might be i want to abandon all of this stuff and reconnect with something more, much more deeply or it might be that you are really interested for example in ex more experimental forms of of branding and advertising and you want to study the ma to help you extend the reach of some of these experiences and some of these skills and knowledge that you already develop equally in the school of communication we get many students that have never studied art before formally or certainly not necessarily come through studying graphic design or illustration or animation we quite often get students in visual communication from literature from policy making from architecture uh, from other fields well outside of the creative arts who and they bring all of this knowledge and experience from other fields and then ex want to explore or experiment with what it means to ad adopt the practices of visual communication in relation to these existing sites and fields of knowledge that they come to us with. 
Um, if you are submitting, um, just keep an eye on time, if you are submitting work that is collaborative, um, either in an ind industrial context or commercial context, or uh, collaborative projects you've done with others at university, be really clear with us in that um, application uh, what your role was. We love to see collaborative work. Many of you will have been working collaborat collaboratively already. Uh, so absolutely include those projects, but be clear in that application what you did within that project. Uh, so if it was curation or art direction, include it. If it was graphic design and artworking, include it. If it was to do the, the editing of a film, include that description. So be really clear uh, what your role was with any, any collaborative project. So alongside the projects, so we ask you to submit these, these sort of up to five projects. Um, we ask, also ask you to record a two minute video of you talking to us. We wish we could interview every single one of you and meet every, every possible applicant. Um, we get thousands of applications, so this isn't, is, this isn't possible. Uh, so we use this two minute video to really hear, to, to give you the opportunity to, to talk directly to us. So this is a, this is a space to, give us a sense of your voice and the story behind the work. So two minutes is not long. Um, so we recommend keeping this really informal. Um, do not hire um, a drone or a film crew to make something really elaborate. We just want you to talk directly to camera on your laptop or from your phone um, and speak to us really, really clearly about the things that matter to you the most. So you might refer to one of your projects that you've submitted in your portfolio. Equally, you might use the two minutes to talk about the things that inspire you most and talk about your hopes and aspirations for the future. So when I mentioned the critical position behind your work or the developing critical position behind your work, the two minute video is a great space to talk to us about that directly. Um, obviously, we're super proud that RCA is, is one of the best art schools in the world, um, but you don't need to mention this in your application. Um, I mentioned this at the start, but I just want to reinforce this message that when you apply to us, you're applying to a particular community of programs. So if you're applying to visual communication, speak to us as though you're applying to visual communication. Don't speak to the RCA as an institution. There's not the time. Um, so what we really want to hear are the specific things that you've observed about um, the open day presentation or some graduate work that you've seen that you loved and the things that you really want to bring to that or the things you hope we can bring to you if you were to join us um, for the 12 months. Um, obviously, we have lots of information, the open days online, the, the RCA website has lots of information about the different programs, but always the best way to see the types of work, the types of questions, the types of research from that's happening within each of the programs through the work of our graduates. So um, in the School of Communication, for example, I would recommend checking out our four key Instagram accounts. These are often run by students themselves, so we'll hand over the Instagram accounts to students, so they're posting live from the studios, or students are publishing or posting about their individual work. So these are maybe a much more reflective documentation of what it feels and uh, like to be a student on one of these programmes. Equally, I think most programmes across the RCA have their own sort of self-independent Instagram channels. Um, visual communication, we have uh, our own publishing platform where staff and students publish research, projects, events uh, called Content Free. This is always, again, a really interesting place to get an insight into the cultural activity of, of visual communication. Um, also, we have uh, the show websites. So from the last few years, every graduating student gets a, a, a sort of a portfolio page as they graduate. Uh, so these are really rich, insightful places organized by program where every single graduating student gets space to, to document and talk about their work in different ways. So we really recommend looking at the programs. If you're not quite sure which program to apply for, then these are again, are the, sort of the, some of the best ways to, uh, to, to see and to feel that connection that you might have uh, to a particular program of study. Um, if your questions are often obviously for, for applicants from UK and around the world around scholarships, um, so there are the, most of the scholarship information you'll need is, is on the RCA website, so do look into that. Um, we are, I'll, I'll come back to this at the end, but just, yeah, that's, that's a resource that's there available to you if you're looking into yeah, funding and scholarships. Just to summarise before we open up into questions, there's just a couple of key things that I'd like to just to reinforce slightly. Um, 
So obviously we're really interested in the work you make or the work you hope to make in the future. This is our driving motivation, but equally within your application, think beyond your work. What is your story and how can you use the projects that you submit, the video on, uh, that you record to tell us a bit about what's led you to this application? What matters to you the most? What do you care about most in the world, uh, both within the creative industries or within your creative practice, but also beyond that in your, in your own world? in your own world, in your own communities? What are the things that matter to you most? And what do you want that to bring to your work in different ways? Why an MA? We get, you, you could do an MA. Um, you could also do your, this work in industry uh, that you might want to research. You could do it in your own time. So what is it specifically, specifically a space of master studies do you hope will offer your work? So why an MA? And also why now? Um, what is it about this moment in time in your particular life or career that's that's really significant to why you want to do an MA? Um, if you're an undergraduate course, it might be that you've just hit on something that you would love to give more space and time to think about. Uh, if you've been working for five, 10 years, it might be that you want to reconnect with something and change and transform your work in different ways. So why, why an MA and why now? As I said, who and what inspires you? So what are the key texts, key artists, key moments, key histories, key communities that really inspire the work that you uh, that you want to do? Or, or... But yeah, absolutely think towards the future. So we're not expecting this application to be a complete story. You want to study an MA to help progress that story in different ways. So definitely the tone of the application, the way that you, um, I would encourage you to approach that is to think towards the future, not just about what has happened, but what you hope might happen next with your work in different ways. So we are um, currently at RCA in round two of uh, the recruitment cycle. Uh, so there's three rounds uh, during the academic year. The round two deadline is this Wednesday at midday at 12 uh, p.m. Uh, so there's still time uh, if you're wanting to put an application together. Um, so that's the, and then as soon as that round is finished, we'll open up to the next round, uh, round three. Um, if you're in round two, you stand a very good chance of still getting a place. Obviously it starts to fill up the longer we leave it through the year in terms of different uh, programs that fill up um, maybe sooner than others. Uh, but round two, there's still a very, very good opportunity and chance for you to, to get a place. So we really encourage you to apply. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, and if there are questions, we can, um, I'll stop sharing my screen so I can see uh, the chat and any questions that have come up. We have quite a number of questions in the okay. chat, <laughs> in the Q&A section, Joe. Cool. Uh, some have already been answered and the others um, can be answered live. Okay. Um, okay, let's, I'll run through these as, as quickly as we can. Uh, so the question here, what advice would you give in talking about our personal intuitive design process? Um, that's a great question. Um, and essentially the way that I would always advise you to do that is through examples of your work. Um, so which is why for visual communication, particularly we encourage you to apply pro um, uh, submit projects which are not yet completely finished. And we want you to include projects that demonstrate the process that you go through. Um, so. When you're putting your applications together, this is not a job interview, and I think it's really important. It's not we're not you know it's not a pitch for 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 a project. Uh, we're looking for you to get a sort of a, we're looking to get a deeper sense of the way that you're working. So be quite honest. I think is my advice. Um, so maybe there are gaps in your process that you would like to to um, address, or maybe there are things that you do quite intuitively that you would like to understand better. Uh, so it's different for every student, it's different for every applicant, it's different for every creative person. So for me, notebooks are really significant. Uh, so I would always include some notebooks, um, so maybe some pages from that. Um, equally, I write quite a lot. I'm a graphic designer, but I write reflectively uh, around my work in different ways. So I might include short bits of text, which talk to me about, talk very directly to about my, my, my process. But I think it's really natural when you're not in and in studying it's hard sometimes to describe it your process because you just do it and um, when you're working to briefs or projects you just intuitively have to respond quite quickly to things so it does create a little bit of uh it does take a little bit of time i think to really think about how to explain that to others always i find visuals are the best way to do it 
Um, so it's hard to describe, but maybe it's easier to show. So look through your work, look at, um, you know, if there are early sketches or prototypes of a project that really give us a sense of the way that you work, as I said, sketchbooks or other materials. So whatever it is that you do, talk us through it. If there's no visual evidence of your intuitive processes, then maybe just find a way of describing it to us. Uh, so what does that process look like? What does research at this point for you look like in different ways? Where do you find your inspiration from? These are the things that I would start to address. Um, okay, there's a question here. For non-design background applicants, how do we show how we work with our chosen uh, body in our videos? Okay, that's a good question. As I said, we get lots of applications coming from student, uh, possible students from different fields. Um, so I would, in the video, I would definitely talk about what that journey looks like. So what is it that you're hoping to bring with you from your existing field? So we have lots of fashion students, for example, that want to study graphic design, or as I said, literature students that maybe work a lot with language and writing, that want to now explore typography or other forms of uh, sort of typographic visual communication. So I always recommend um, not sort of just dismissing all of that previous knowledge and work. It's, I would explore within that two minute video um, and through the work you submit, what that relationship might be. What does that shift look like for you? What knowledge would you like to actually explore at a deeper level through the lens, for example, of visual communication or through the viewpoint of visual communication? So again, we're not expecting there to be a full answer to this because this is again why you would want to study an MA, but I would talk a little bit about what you hope that bridge or that journey from one field to another might be. What would it help you to achieve within your work in different ways? Um, but again, to be really honest, um, you've like with the two minute video, the more informal and the more reflective you can be, uh, the easier it is for us to make sure that this is the right course for you, that we can give you what you need uh, in your work. Um, but just to give us a sense, you know, a really clear sense of what that journey to us might might be. Um, OK, there's a question here. Could you give some advice on applying for for design from a more technical background with perhaps less strict design work, computer science. Um, so, I mean, without looking at work, it's hard to give like too direct advice, um, but I would always, I would, this is, might be something to think about uh, for many applicants, and I've seen applicants do this before, is if you're coming from a very different field with a very different skill set, and you're looking to uh, apply to visual communication, for example, you might um, want to set a small self-initiated project for yourself. Uh, it could be a one day exercise. It could be a day in screen printing somewhere, or it could be doing some illustrations or a very different way of working just to kind of give us a sense of what that work would, would look like. Um, a few years ago, there was a student who applied um, who came from a very, very commercial corporate branding um, sort of background and wanted to study visual communication and we we're looking through the work at really very well executed very sort of direct commercial projects branding projects but we couldn't really see what that bridge or relationship might be to sort of academic study or the program of study that visual communication had um or could offer and then the last project that this student submitted was this sketchbook and in that sketchbook were hundreds of pages of beautiful drawings of indian street typography and then we delved a bit deeper and we realized that actually the practice was wanting to explore um, cultural typography, intercultural dialogue, looking through drawing and illustration around typography, the history of these kind of typographic forms, color use, the relationship between um, street architecture and typography and language. All of these really interesting questions started to surface, but all through quite an intuitive, natural uh, sort of love of observation that this particular applicant had. Um, sort of documented and recorded over a number of years. So this was the project that got her the place um, on the program. Although we, you know, the branding projects were really good, it was this other thing, this kind of much sort of deeper, more personal representation of, of a creative practice that would that would um yeah, that just gave us a sense of of where that that student was hoping to head. Um, good question here for neurodivergent applicants. Can they submit a written response to all responses that require video? Yes, you you can do. I would notify the admissions sort of you can um, notify the people as you apply that that is that has been your preference and you would rather submit a um, written application rather than a video. Just make that really clear when you when you apply.
Okay, um, that's a question here. So I'm just riffing through. There's lots of questions. So I will I will try and pick out different questions to cover different things. Um, okay, there's a question here. Do we talk about what we want to learn on the program of study more than we want, why we want to join the RCA? Yes. Good question and definitely the right kind of conclusion. Um, we really want to hear why you're applying to a particular program of study. We 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 take it already that you want to join us at RCA, but we're looking spe for specific details about what it is that you hope to learn from the, the tutors, the curriculum, the projects, the kind of types of work that a specific program of study is offering for you as a, as a possible student. So don't spend time talking about the RCA as an institution or the alumni or the history of the place. Talk directly to what it is that you hope um, the programme of study will offer you. Um, and again, the online recordings of the open days are probably the best place to find the much more detailed information about the curriculum for each of the, of the programme. Uh, so there's a question there about MA photography. So again, all of the online open days for every single program is available on the RCA open day website. So you could see the MA photography open day recording, see their tutors, their head of program talk about the specifics of that program. I'm here as an admissions tutor talking about general advice for, 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 for portfolio applications, but definitely look into the open day recordings for specific programs. Okay, so there's a question here. I have a diverse portfolio and I'm applying for two courses uh, and my skill sets are applicable to both of them. Do you think it's okay that I submit the same portfolio for both? Um, so as I said, just to repeat, you are welcome to apply to only two programs. I recommend one if you can, but if you really cannot decide between two particular programs, uh, just submit it to both. I would try and maybe just change the application slightly um if you think it's necessary to speak directly to that type of work so um it depends on which program it is but for example if you were to apply to animation and visual communication for the animation portfolio you would need to demonstrate much a stronger sense of moving image of narrative and all those other kind of dimensions of animation work whereas if it was visual communication we might not need to see that so much so you might just want to not do different work but just emphasize different parts of your portfolio if you're applying to two to two separate programs okay it's a question here very practical one love practical questions um how do i craft my portfolio if i do not have advanced experience in art what do you recommend for portfolio creation um so you can use we we ask you to submit a pdf to hold your projects uh, rather than lots of different JPEGs or images. Partly we ask you to do this is it's because it's easier to view it for a reader to sort of look through your work, but also because you're then really consciously constructing a narrative through the PDF. You're really thinking about the story that you're telling us through each of the pages of the PDF. Um, if you don't have design experience, many of you might not have used InDesign or other kind of um, bits of software, there are free online things you can use, uh, so software such as Figma um, or other online platforms which are free to use, which you can use just to do really simple layouts. Um, but don't spend too long designing the PDF. Um, so sometimes we get very, very elaborate, sort of beautiful um, designed portfolio spreads and pages. Um, we only need really, we don't need that. Uh, all we require is to be able to see your work very visibly so we can see it in detail. Um, so don't put too many small images on one page, for example. Don't put too much writing on a page if it becomes a bit um, difficult to read. Make sure things are very legible. So if you're using typography, make sure that it's um, sort of, yeah, it's large enough for us to read it on a small, smallish screen. Um, so yeah, don't worry. It doesn't need to look amazing. Put it that way it just keep it very 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 simple the main thing we're looking at is the work itself um so another thing just to mention related to this question is if your work for example is digital it's quite easy just to transfer that digital work into a, dig a digital portfolio um, but if your work is maybe more physical or print based or working with materials in different way think carefully about how you document and record your work so you might just want to i mean iphone or um Mobile cameras now are pretty good, so you can get pretty decent quality images. So think if you're working with, uh, for example, uh, printmaking, 
Um, maybe the, the paper material that you've printed on is really important to the piece of work. So make sure you document that really careful. Or if you're working with much more three-dimensional um, architectural ways of working, think about how you document and record that work. So it just gives us a sense of the of the of the the, the yeah the detail and the quality and the execution of your of your work. So spend a bit of time thinking about documentation if your work is physical. Uh, that's the only thing that I would say. Um, is it ideal to cover only three projects, but each project has two to three explanations? Yes. So um, we recommend for one project, there's between probably six and 10 pages in that one project. And then we say up to five, five projects for visual communication. Other programs do have slightly different criteria. So it will, when you log in and you choose your program, you'll see very clearly what it asks for. Um, but editing is really important. So as I said, we get lots of applications and therefore I, I'm going to spend three solid weeks looking through portfolios. So when I see a very well thought through, very clear, very well edited, portfolio so you might not want to include every aspect of every project that you submit but you choose key things from a through a project's journey that you really want us to know about and that's really clearly presented this one means that I can see the work properly and I can get into the detail of the work but also it communicates confidence it means that you've really thought about where the value of that work is what questions you think that work is raising and you're really generous in wanting to share and show that to us in a really clear way so I think editing being quite concise is really important when you put any application together um, but particularly for places where we're reading lots of different applications all uh, you know over a very short period of time um, also, just to say, if you don't have five projects, you're welcome to submit less. These are all, this is all guidance. It's not, a, again, it's not an examination. Um, so if you approach it in quite a different way, because actually your work doesn't really fit that format or formula, um, you are welcome to do so. For example, a student um, last year, um, they only wanted to submit one project, but it was a very big project. It was a big curatorial exhibition. So this applicant's split this big project into four different parts one was research one was about curation and exhibition design one was about a book work a publicly published book and one was about um sort of the more experimental workshops that were happening around this exhibition so for this applicant it made much more sense to focus on one project that was big enough and deep enough but then split that project into really key four key kind of um areas that, that of work that happened through that project this was really helpful, one, because we could, again, we could see that project in detail, um, but also it meant that I already had a uh, confidence that that student, that applicant had a really interesting way of organizing and thinking about their practice. Uh, they'd really thought about the role that they played in different uh, parts of this one project. So you're welcome to submit one project if you want, but just think about um, what the, yeah, what the projects are telling us. Um, so there's a question here again about MA fashion. Please, if you've got specific questions about programs of study, I can speak to visual communication very clearly and School of Comms uh, uh, programs. But if you want to ask questions specifically to the MA fashion heads of program, well, first off, watch the online open day uh, that I should, we shared the link with earlier. This has got all the key information that you'll need, hopefully. Um, but if there are then further questions, do get in touch with that program or attend the next open day. There's online open days regularly through the year. Uh, so you could ask specific questions about um, specific programs. Uh, there's a question here. The application for industrial design engineering, in engineering mentions 20 pages max for the portfolio. Yeah, again, so you, it's really important, I mentioned this already, but it's really important that you look at the criteria that each program is asking for. So if if um, ID, Industrial Design Engineering, mentions 20 pages max, then that's your maximum. We say 12 because we find, I think 12 is, is sufficient for a visual communication project, uh, but follow the guidance from each program. Um, I think that's good that each program has slightly different versions, although sometimes difficult to fully understand because different practices and different fields of study require different ways of talking about the work. So I, I, one thing I would say though, for every application across every program of study and tutors that I know that teach and work on IDE, for example, um, all wanna see research. They all wanna see the, the, the decision-making, the research process, the ways that you've tested and developed your work in different ways. We really want to see the story behind the project. So that's going to be the same whatever program you apply to. So whatever that looks like, whatever that process was for you to develop that work, show us. Um, that's going to be the same for, for every project. And then 
particularly for IDE, which has an engineering element, they're going to want to see much more detailed kind of execution of these projects. Like, so how does that outcome operate in the world? How did you test it with maybe users or other kind of people that maybe are going to be uh, in, engaging with the, the the work that you've produced? So for, for some programs, that kind of UF, U, user engagement, testing, prototyping thing is much more important. For some of the fine art programs, which is much more focused on, on developing work for galleries or exhibitions or that kind of format there's a very different set of criteria that you might kind of address through through your work so again watch the open days um i'm admissions tutor for the school of communication but there are admissions tutors for other schools as well that you are welcome to get in touch with or attend one of their q a sessions as well if you have more specific questions okay we've got eight more minutes so i'm going to run through these as quickly as i can they keep coming um Okay, that's, this is a good question. So this question uh, from Ginny, with an understanding of the MFA communication uh, is fairly new, what are the key areas to focus on for the MFA portfolio? So the MFA programs are run um, in parallel to the MA programs, but they are quite different in the way that they work. So definitely, if you are looking to apply to the MFA, watch again, the online open day. Um, it goes in lots of detail in terms of how that course is constructed. But the MFA is a much, much kind of more diverse experience in the sense that you are choosing different electives through that MFA. So you might do an elective from animation, if this is the communication MFA, you might do an elective from visual communication, you might do one from uh, uh, digital direction, for example, and you choose these much shorter programs of study to construct a learning experience which speaks directly to the things that you want to address. So I think this means that you have to um, maybe have a much clearer sense of what you need from the MF, uh, MFA before you arrive. So you already have a sense of these are the things that I really want to address. And I know that I can sort of construct this thing. Whereas the MA programs have a much uh, sort of more established curriculum that you're following particular units of study, which which are connected to that, that specific program. So I think I would, if I was applying for the MFA, I encourage you to do so, but I would maybe demonstrate that independence, demonstrate that interdisciplinary kind of mindset or demonstrate that more kind of, yeah, um, uh, what's the phrase? Like much more self-led learning that is required through that through that MFA journey. Um, okay, how do we talk about our creative process in the video? Uh, or do you want us to talk in the video or can we record a voiceover after uh, or include a written script to come to a video? Um, you're welcome to script it. Like if you if it's helpful for you to script it in advance, like you can read a script if you wish. Um, some people it's very comfortable to talk to camera um, and, and, and sort of have that sort of um, that, that video recorded. So find a way that feels natural to you. Some people are very confident and can speak directly through things, but two minutes is not long. So I would, for everybody, recommend structuring that two minutes to address different things. So maybe something about your research, something about your process, existing sort of experiences, something about the MA that you hope to study and something about the future, for example. So try and sort of structure that two minutes in a way that you really clearly get across those important things that you want to say. Um, I wouldn't use the two minute video to explain a project in detail. We have quite a lot of applications that come through which just sort of use it as a way of talking through their first project. Refer to projects, definitely, but we can see the work. So we can look through the work in detail. We're very used to looking at work. Um, you know, we're, we're, we, we look through lots of projects, lots of applications. So we, we, your, your audience is a knowing one in the sense that we can really quickly kind of delve into complex projects that you submit. So I would use the, my recommendation particularly for the School of Communication, but I would imagine for most programs is to use the two minutes video to give us a much richer sense of, of, of your voice, of your, of your values, of your hopes, of the things that really are inspiring your process and the ways that you think about the world and your work. So I would use it for much more from that point of view rather than going through a detailed description of a project. Um, I, I Don't put too much time into the making of the video. So uh, don't sort of do too much, don't do anything elaborate. So if, if it, you know, there could be a voiceover with some images if you wish, but equally, equally, we have lots of videos where it's just literally like this, talking to your camera on your, on your laptop. And this is nice for us. Like it's just, it's, I listen to your voice, I can watch you talk and then I look through your work and then we do these things together and your voice and your work somehow sort of merges together. So I get a real, a, a, a bigger picture, bigger sense of where you're, of where you're coming from. 
Um, okay, there's a question here about how detailed to be. So when you when you upload a project, uh, so a PDF, for example, so you upload a PDF into Pebblepad, which is the platform where you submit your portfolio. There's a there's like a, a, a text field next to it where you can include a project description or an indicator of what it is we're looking at. So you're welcome to include something there. Um, equally, many students put short captions on the pages as we run through the PDF. Um, don't write much. We have some which is like, a, there's like an essay on every page and it's almost impossible for us to engage with that amount of information in the time available to review the portfolio. So again, be really clear. I think I like the phrase extended captions. So short or slightly extended captions, which just give us your voice as you're talking, things that you would say to me if we were sat next to each other looking through the work, those key things. So maybe a couple of sentences on a page just to guide us through the work, but don't write too much uh, text inside the, the PDF submission is my, is my advice. Okay, do we need to support our critical questions and philosophies behind our work with literature or research from other artists? Um, yeah, I think so, uh, but not like a formal bibliography. Again, this is not an examination in the sense of, you know, like a dissertation or thesis submission. But if there are particular artists or writers or philosophers that really, really inform and inspire your, your work in different ways or challenge your work, which is why you want to come and study to do something completely different, just talk to us about who those key people are or key thoughts or theories are. Either as part of a project submission or just in the video just talked about the things that are really kind of starting to challenge or, or, or help you think about your work in different ways uh, it's an interesting question here uh so um, I'm nowhere near down this list of questions so um so uh, there's a question here about uh skill set or mastery um, so we're definitely not going to teach you skills directly so I'm not going to sit down and teach you how to use Adobe InDesign or Photoshop there's lots of technical support for you available, lots of technicians who will help guide you through different kind of tools or software or, ma or making processes. You'll get, you'll, we, we talk a lot about making, um, but a lot of your sort of developing your individual skill set will be, be self-led. So this will be by you because there'll be some people that are incredibly um, sufficient with certain bits of kit and technology and there are others that maybe are still sort of catching up and learning new things. Both of these things will be happening in the studios around one another. Um, as a former student, I would say that I learned most of my new technical skills from fellow students who I sat next to, who were helping me do my work. Um, but what we are really focused on uh, in terms of teaching are the much deeper questions around the role that you play, the critical questions that we're asking, the theories and the philosophies that are sort of changing the, the way that we work, the deeper research questions. These are the things we're gonna be digging through in tutorials, in seminars, in lectures, the bigger questions, the kind of the, the richer, deeper questions that are really critical to the future of different uh, industries and practices. Through that, skills will develop, projects will happen, but the, we are talking about a deep academic kind of process of thinking about, uh, yeah, the, the 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 bigger questions that, that, that underpin the work that we do. Um, okay, I'm going to have to skip through some of these, apologies. Um, I think most of these have been addressed. Okay, there's one here. Uh, considering 10 year work experience, I'm curious to know which of these programs might be better suited to someone my level experiencing. Uh, I'm curious to know which of these programs, MDES, Futures and MA, IDE, how does the job placement take place after completion of course? Again, um, I would definitely direct this question to the individual programs, either on the open days or just by getting in touch with the, the tutors. Each program has very different ways of thinking about professional practice. So for visual communication, we have guest practitioners, graphic designers, artists, filmmakers, writers, theorists, interesting people. We have guest lecturers coming in throughout the year who both talk about their individual work, but also how they realize the work in the world. Uh, then we have a professional practice thread that runs through the far, final term where we talk much more about practical things such as developing your, your portfolio and accounting and, and sort of managing a studio and all those really practical questions. Different programs have very different things. Um, I definitely, if you are a, um, a more experienced applicant you maybe have worked in the world uh, so at a deeper level I definitely would look at the MDES and the postgraduate research thread as well so look at their open day there are different levels of research that you might want to engage with rather than a full MA program so uh, definitely have a look into the different options and, and levels you can come into.
Yes, thank you very much for the great presentation. Okay. Uh, and the answers, Joseph, we had a lot of questions and you covered most of them, but still we have like a, an unanswered uh, question. Uh, let's do it like this. If you could just uh, share an email address on the chat box, uh, the students can contact you for further details and if they have further questions. Sure. And uh, it was very informative a session for the attendees. Thank you very much for the presentation. You're very welcome. Thank you, Thank you. and thanks, Joe. Just one word of um, advice for the Turkish students in the call. Turkish and European students are welcome to apply to the RSA Deputy Vice Chancellor International Scholarships for Europeans, and it's worth seven thousand pounds. It's just been launched, so it's still open for applications even up to round three. So for those of you who are, who are just um, learning about this for the first time, you can still apply for it, even if you submit within round three. That's all. Yes, thank, thank you very you. much for the information, Stephanie and Joseph. Uh, we would like to uh, thank the participants as well. And if they have further questions, they can contact you on the uh, email that you shared on the chat box. And yep. it was uh, it was very good to have you and I talked and yeah. look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.